Good morning and good afternoon and welcome to um, the Alchemy of Social Media Creation. We're very excited to get you uh, a little bit late. Uh, obviously, as it happens sometimes, uh, we had some uh, computer crashing. Yet we have a very exciting program today, a very exciting show. Uh, we're going to talk about business to business, social media. And we're going to talk specifically about um, uh, curation and how it helps companies achieve results in social media. The guest that we have today, I'm very excited to introduce, is Arabella. Arabella is from Scoop It, and I will give her a proper introduction later. Uh, what we're going to get started with will be to actually look at um, the um, alchemy of social media curation, looking at uh, some uh, um, concept behind it. And let me start to share my screen here in a minute. Here we are. Let's see if I can share that. Here we are. So let me make sure I got my screen here. All right, perfect. So this this um, uh, uh, chart really kind of look at. Oh no, we're not seeing that. So let me come back to this. Well, I'm glad this is going on YouTube so we can actually make a loop of this and keep having fun all day. Let me see. All right. Can we see the screen well, Dante? Are we good on that? Okay. So I'm going to use that little screen. For some reason, when I put it on full screen, it just takes me out of this. So um, anyway, um, the idea here is not really to go through the entire history of marketing. That would be way too long. However, a lot of people in the B2B space start to really, really, really kind of not quite understand how things have changed and why we are in the position we are in today. A lot of companies are actually still in that paradigm of the traditional marketing. The traditional marketing really has not changed a lot in, uh, since the 1950s in the sense that there was a certain amount of control in the, um, in the um, 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 information that will come out from the, from the company. Specifically, a lot of companies today in a B2B space are still in that paradigm where the website becomes that online brochure. This is who we are, this is what we do, click here for more information. A lot of companies are in that paradigm and they can be successful that way. Yet, the world around them are really changed where there's a demand coming from new generations, a demand coming from people that want a better, more authentic, more direct link to companies. And that slowly starts to permeate really the, um, the B2B space. Um, for people that have some question later on, uh, I'll be happy to answer more about that change in marketing. What's interesting about it is how rapid that change is coming. Um, uh, some people are thinking, and I hear some marketer in B2B talking about texting, when really what you want to put your emphasis on is notifications. How to get into that pristine mobile screen that uh, um, most of the population is actually carrying with them. And the best way to do that is getting an app, so getting some notifications. How to get that content in. Um, and a lot of companies are really extremely distressed by the fact that it's actually never stopping. It's a continuous content of information. The good news about this is it also means that people have short memory, meaning that if you have a bad review or you have something that is not positive towards your company, if you do things right, those bad reviews will actually become less and less important because there will be new positive reviews coming out your way. This is, I think, the side that um, kind of an overview of all the different tools that uh, B2B marketing um, and B2C marketing uh, in social media are about. Um, when you look at the center of it, yes, Facebook is maybe not as dominant as a platform with the younger generation as it was, but it's still carrying uh, a part of 1 billion users, which is really the reason why most companies still need to consider Facebook as a legitimate platform to engage their audience. What's very important for B2B company is really to make sure that their website, their corporate website, is mobile friendly. Half of the traffic on the internet today really comes from some sort of a mobile platform, whether it's a smartphone or a tablet. A lot of buyers, a lot of B2B executives that actually are interested in switching suppliers, so they're interested in what B2B companies have to offer, are doing the shopping online on their own time using their own tablet. 
it is very important at that point that your website actually is visually up to it and it's not okay anymore to have a website that is not mobile friendly. A lot of companies start and thinking like, okay, is that social media ready? Is that good for me? Is that not good for me? And what kind of content can we put? And this is obviously, you know, what this program is about. We're going to talk at length about content through curation with Arabella in a minute. But that's not the only kind of content, obviously. Uh, in between way to get an audience is through an old fashioned technique called the blog. And uh, we'll recommend that company use um, WordPress, uh, which is not only open source, meaning free, but it also gives a lot of tools for social media, uh, for companies to be into social media and actually get the message heard. What is particularly successful for B2B companies to have a blog that is actually coming from the CEO itself or himself or herself. That CEO actually has the ability to give content to his or her team to actually use in social media. And blog does not have to be difficult. I'm talking about maybe a posting a week, uh, two or three um, uh, paragraph. And that really allows a lot of company to tiptoe their way into social media before really getting deep and heavy into um, uh, content generation. And of course, when we talk about content, it's impossible not to consider the possibilities offered by video. A lot of companies are still stuck in that, oh my god, if we need to do a video, we need to hire a video producing company. Actually, you really don't. As a matter of fact, most of the employees of companies today carry in their own pocket, whether it's company provided or whether they bought it themselves, an actual smartphone that can take high definition video. Obviously, that raises the question of, you know, do you want your employees to actually take videos? And the answer is yes, as long as you have a social media policy that kind of regiment it. But what an opportunity, really. If a picture is worth a thousand words, what is a video worth? And then throughout you know, the, the morning, we can actually look at different and other ways to actually get your social media ready. But I don't want to take too much time on this, and I want to go more towards what is a clear path of success. A lot of companies really are um, turned, by, uh, turned off by the choices that there are. Where do I actually put my efforts? So here's a slide that actually clearly show the difference between B2B versus B2C. Obviously, today we're going to talk more about B2B, so it's important that your site is mobile friendly. It's also important that you consider creating a blog, as well as a Google Plus to maximize your SEO, a YouTube platform to actually post any video you have, a LinkedIn page, although be careful with LinkedIn. You can create and you should create a company page. Just understand that less than 5% of the users are actually engaged with that platform. The way to get around that engagement, of course, is what we're going to be talking in a minute for Scoop It. And then we recommend that you use a tool like Sprout Social to actually make sense of all of this. If you do have a retail location or you can actually, on the trade show, create a temporary location, Foursquare can drive you some traffic. And then you can consider using Twitter and Facebook. And if you have a visual product, Pinterest, which I will let you Google on your own. The four steps to success is really where uh, most companies fail into that B2B environment because they stop at about step three. And you cannot just do that. Uh, first thing is, a good thing to do is actually getting a little test on Facebook. And that test is actually to see if your audience is ready to be engaged on a, biz on a business to business with Facebook. A lot of time, we, I have CEOs that just say, oh, nobody's using Facebook that I know of. Is that actually representative of the people that are buying your product? And the only way you can really know is know how many of them are actually on Facebook. And one way to do this is just doing a simple test, what I call the Facebook test. You take a representative sample, let's say 100 to 200 email addresses of your clients or past clients, and you upload this into your Facebook page, and then you see how many of them actually have a Facebook account. And if you match less than 20%, then maybe you don't want to do Facebook for your B2B business. Maybe your audience is not there. On the other hand, if you match 30% or more, it may be a clear and easy decision if one out of three people actually have an account on Facebook and those people are actually buying products from your company, then obviously it makes sense for you to have a page on Facebook. Then you have to really develop that relationship with the top people that you know, either they're employees or customers or advisors, and send them a personal invite to actually entice them and say, hey, great news, we are on social media, we're doing B2B now and social media, and those are the sites that I'd like you personally to try. 
And then, of course, use the power of those sites like LinkedIn, Google+, Facebook, and Twitter will all allow you to actually upload the entire list of email you have and actually invite them, uh, in, meaning invite your clients and customers and prospects to actually become a fan or liker or follower on your different page in social media. The most important thing you have to do as side of a, of a social media strategy is having a real content strategy. On the B2B, it has to be about substance. As you can see on the right, you see that B2B, that B2C, uh, business to consumer, it's about fun, causality, being unique, discount. That seldom work in business to business. But sub substance does not have to be hard. There's substance you create and a substance that actually you uh, rebound on other people's articles, which is what we're going to talk in a minute when I turn it over to Arabella. So the substance is posting from the CEO on a blog. It's about spotlights on employee. And then, and this is where most companies actually stop, reach out and aggressively post on behalf of the company on other pages and network. Do not uh, hesitate to actually take your social media sites and actually post on other sites to benefit from um, to benefit from their traffic. For example, if you're in a specific industry and that industry has uh, a dominant platform that most people go to, then get an alliance with that platform, post on it, post on their Facebook site, post on their uh, um, um, group in LinkedIn, post on their Google Plus page on behalf of your company to actually benefit from that traffic. The cornerstone of your strategy has to be a monthly event, something that uh, it's either online or offline, something that you uh, not only promote before the event, but something that you actually use and, and keep promoting after the event so people know what they miss. And it doesn't quite matter if it's online or offline. Uh, it can be a chat with the CEO, it can be a Google Hangout on air like we're doing, or it can be uh, the launch of a new product. The point being, to be successful in B2B, uh, you have to really be out there and uh, be aggressive into getting your content in a targeted way to the audience that matters to you. The other way you can do this, on top of this, as you can see, is using scooped articles. And this is really where I'm extremely privileged and very, very happy to actually um, uh, turn this over to Arabella. And let me introduce Arabella from Scoopit. Uh, I met Arabella actually the very first time, uh, that was a, a year ago at Tech Week Chicago. And she was working actually as an executive director there. And she put Tech Week for um, a few years. And uh, after Tech Week, she actually moved on to help scoop it, develop to the platform and the dominant platform it is today. It is today about creation. And um, we've been working for maybe about six months now. And it's been always a pleasure to have you. And thank you so much for joining us for the, uh, for the Engan on Air, Arabella. And she's. <laughs> Hi, and uh, she, as you can not see, but she's in San Francisco in their office right now, and they keep moving, but they told me that this move is, is good for at least a year, right? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, uh, let's turn it to you and, uh, and uh, learn a little bit more about Scoop It. Great, thanks. So um, I guess I could, could I screen share this, or I could just... Um, yeah. Right? That's what I did, yeah. Awesome. Uh, so thank you so much for having me and uh, letting, giving me this opportunity to talk about Scoop It and how um, B2B businesses can use it for their, um, to feed their social media with relevant content. And I really love the way you um, prefaced our, our, our conversation today on um, the benefits of having content for um, your social media strategy because it's not just about um, knowing that you need a, uh, to be on Facebook or knowing that you need to have a Twitter account, but it's also thinking about what, what, what would make that um, grow, what would make your presence grow. But in, case, in the case of B2B um, businesses, I have this um, presentation to show you uh, specifically how um, some B2B businesses are using Scoopit and how you could apply these, uh, this case study or um, some of the ideas here to your own um, social media and content strategy. So let me do this. It took me three tries, so and there you are, you see? You're smarter than me. Great, it's working. Okay, so 
All right, so um, scoop it for B2B, um, building market leadership in niche industries. Um, one of the things that I, one of the reasons why I think scoop it is great really for B2B is because we are actually a content curation platform that is made for topics in on the long tail of, of the spectrum of, of different things you can talk about. For example, um, mostly Twitter and big media companies um, like New York Times, they focus on the short tail, what's really um, happening right now, current events, trendy things, Kim Kardashian, things like that. Well, the B2B um, market and B2B businesses, they oftentimes have very focused, very narrow um, audience base. Uh, but that doesn't mean that just because you have a narrow audience base that you don't have, you know, the readership of of um, the New York Times doesn't mean that you can't have your own media to establish leadership in your niche industry. And that's what I'm going to talk about, how building this sort of market leadership in your industry will help you um, generate leads, gain a social presence, and also gain a bigger online presence. So how will your business benefit from using Scoop It? As I said, um, it will help you establish market leadership in your industry because you'll be um, spreading information, news, not necessarily news about your company, but it, mainly it's news that is relevant to what your company is interested in, your industries, what you care about, what you stand for, the values you stand for as an organization. Scoop It can also help grow your online presence. Unlike social networks, we are about distributing content everywhere. As you said, Philippe, it's not, you know, you should, you should really try to, to um, get on platforms. Businesses should really try to get on platforms that really fit for them. Well, Scoop It allows you to not only curate um, content on a Scoop It page, but you could also send this out to, to and publish to all your social networks, including Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, LinkedIn groups, um, and also uh, WordPress and other and Pinterest and Google Plus. We are just integrated with everything. So basically, this will help you get found online. And another thing is, when it comes to Twitter and Facebook, did you know that when you post something on Twitter and Facebook, that up has a lifespan of about 20 to 30 minutes. That means that that's not, you're not capturing traffic or even any sort of um, thought um, engaging en engagement with your audience by just posting once a day for, and, and, and having a tweet last for 20 minutes to 30 minutes of, of real engagement. Um, and so what you want to do is really capture this in, on, on uh, capture ideas great content that's relevant about your industry, what you're passionate about, and um, put it in a, in a content hub. And also, um, when it comes to Facebook pages, those are, Facebook is a closed network. Facebook is not indexed by Google. Scoop It is indexed by Google, and it has highly search engine optimized pages. And I'll show you the results from our VD um, customers and uh, users and how they've seen their traffic, their um, page views grow. Next point is, um, Scoop It will also help you, like I said, feed your social network with relevant content that will attract potential customers or a fan base of evangelists. Now, the problem with social networks um, in general is that they're actually on the social graph. When you're a B2B business and you're talking about a niche industry, you are, um, you're, you're really mainly based on your interest graph. So that means that you can, put out, say as a CEO, you can put out a piece of content on your, on your um, Facebook page, your profile, your own Facebook profile, and maybe you'll get your friends and family to come on because they support you. But really your Facebook feed and your Facebook profile is made up of many different things including personal, personal posts. But what you also want to do is you want to make it, um, you, you want to be able to establish um, some sort of um, interest-based topic, um, topic posting. And that will help you with Scoop It. Also, we're, um, we also help you keep your current customers interested because we're integrated with, um, with emails. So, oops, I think that you are only seeing the first one. Are you still only seeing the first one? Uh, yes, now we're seeing the second one, yep. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Yeah, you may want to go full screen maybe for, for the whole slide. Yeah, I'll just do that. Can you see that? 
Uh, we can see the second slide indeed, yeah. We can okay. see your slide deck and then the second slide, yeah. Okay, excellent. So We're just missing a little bit of the text, but, yeah. you know, that's fine. Does that work? Can you see it? Um, if you, can you go full screen maybe on your presentation or? Full screen right now. Okay. Can you see it? Most of it, yes. Okay. Just, uh, I'll let you know just the bottom um, is missing, the after quality social media and content. Excellent. So basically, um, the next point is keeping your current customers interested by sending out interesting and beautiful curated newsletters. We are now integrated with email, so you don't even need a designer to um, send a beautiful newsletter. And not only that, yes, like um, those platforms like MailChimp, make it, MailChimp, Vertical Response, Constant Content, make it easier to send out newsletter, but then you still have to think about content. But if you're already curating on a topic page, you can then easily just send that out weekly or monthly to your customers and get, keep them engaged with, with content that they'll be interested in. And also the last point of why, how um, your business will benefit from using Stupid is um, we help you come out with quality social media and content with minimal cost and time investment compared to other solutions. So we really want to show that, yes, it does, it, it's, not, it's not an automate, automated aggregator. We, that's not what we do. What we do is we actually help you discover content and you're the one who figures out whether or not this piece of content is good for your business. And then you add that layer of, um, layer of, of um, context and, and relevancy and that, that is really how you're going to build your voice as a B2B um, market leader. So the next slide, can you see that? Um. We're on the second slide now. If you okay. can move to the third one. Did it go through? No, not yet. Well, let's see. There we are. Now I think I have to get out of um, full screen and then play. Yeah. So now um, I just wanted to show you how stupid is one, two, three, um, because I know that time is of the essence for uh, business um, owners. So the first thing that you would do is um, select for a, a, a piece of content that you think is great for your, for your um, topic of interest um, that really represents your business. And um, we have a suggestion engine, and that's basically um, our own search engine within our platform that gives you suggestions according to the keywords you put into this uh, suggestion engine. You can also optimize it with um, RSS feeds of blogs that you already read or industry news that you already go to. And then the next one is... So now we do the second step, um, edit. So we really encourage a lot of our users to just um, add just a piece of, of um, insight to whatever the, you're scooping. That's because that will really help, like I said before, um, establish your brand voice. And the, you could also edit the, um, the, the post title and then add um, and also um, add a different paragraph if you'd like or make the picture. And that's a feature on our uh, Scoop It for Business package. The next one is share. So this is where you're really going to, um, you know, get the most out of uh, making a scoop at your content hub. So you can actually share to all your social social networks. You can share to your to well, it'll be posted so the search engines can find you. Your topic page is not private, so the search uh, Google loves us and and it will index your page. Like I said, you can also share to an email, and we also have an API, an open API, and that is for integrations that are um, more um, basically beyond the business package. And I can talk to you more about that if you'd like. Um, just give me, um, you know, give send me an email or reach out to me. And so now, as I promise, I'm going to go over a case study because I think that's really the best way to. Um, show you how to use Scoopit for B2B. This is a case study for IS Decision, and they are a uh, company that does consulting for IT consulting. And they are a um, information technology software publisher who specializes in infrastructure and security, and they have 3,000 customers worldwide. And now, 
they came to Scoop It because they had a problem. They wanted to know how do you get top of mind in a crowded market with multiple vendors and numerous potential customers. So they figured out with their content strategy that their target audience are technology professionals. These are engineers and specialists, CIOs, IT consultants. These are the people that are going to get them their big business clients. When you do think about um, putting together a strategy for your social media, you still want to think about, hey, you know, what, which topics would engage your audience? Well, this is what they thought about, which topics would engage their audience. So this is IS Decisions curated topic lineup, and this is what they came up with. They thought that their audience would like Microsoft News, Infrastructure News, IT tools, security, and of, they also have a um, page on corporate news where they just add anything that um, is any coverage, news coverage, or media coverage that is about their business. But all the other ones are mainly um, curated content from different sources, um, anywhere from uh, you know PC Magazine to um, TechCrunch or New York Times, or even some small niche blogs. And this is where they find um, their content. Uh, like I said, we have a Scoop It has a suggestion engine, but sometimes they also um, use our um, Scoop It bookmarklet, which can then add to your browser, which is similar to the Pinterest bookmarklet. Um, basically, you can curate and post any web page onto your Scoop It topic page. And then um, there's also Google Reader that they, they use to discover other readers, since Google Reader is already dying. And, um, and then they also can, if they decide to curate company blog, blog posts and news. So the next one is like, what type of content will they curate? So it really depends on also your industry, what, con what, co what content you want to curate. Because for example, if you're a really highly visual industry, for example, like an, an architect or a designer, um, you would probably want to uh, get really beautiful photos. So that's, that's like, you know, visuals are, are, are great to show off in, in curated context. Um, and also, it depends what you know what audience you you want to go after. If your industry going after um, women, then Pinterest would actually be a good place for you to curate content. Um, but the other content types are, like I said, news, product reviews, tips and tools, strategy. Um, this is for IS decisions, geek stuff, and then relevant multimedia like slide share presentations, videos, and infographics. So now that layer of um, personalization is really important to us at Scoop It because we believe that um, what we're trying to do is make the web a smarter place. And in order to do, in order to organize the web, make it a smarter place, we really need people to add their their insight because you need to tell other people why this piece of content is relevant to your business. That is a really great way to showcase your thought leadership and also just add that sort of human voice to each piece because really no, uh, no machine, no, no algorithm out there can replace your, your, your eye for what is right and how your business should be represented by a piece of content. And then, like I said, there's social sharing. You can share from your Scoop It topic page to everywhere, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, Google um, search as well. And then for the business um, package, you also get the ability to um, brand and integrate your website into your, your, I'm sorry, your topic page into your website. So for example, these pages are all but they are branded and integrated into isdecisions.com. And I think that this is a really beautiful way to show that um, you know, your content is, is linked to your brand. And also, because um, if you have the business package, you can also add your topic page to a um, subdomain, which means that you would get all of your 
all of that traffic going to your page. And then I just wanted to let you um, go show you the actual results because this will give you an idea on how this makes an impact. So the targeted audience of IS decisions is um, 56,400 plus, visits. so targeted audience, they've collected a targeted audience of 50,400 visits on niche topics and 110,000 page views and 46,000 search results in Google. They've also generated leads and also brand awareness. Um, Philippe, did you have a question? Yeah, I mean, once you once you finish, we are starting to get a little bit of questioning on Twitter, and I wanted to relay those to you because I have some question of my own. Oh, excellent! Great. Um, let me. Um, I'm almost done here. Just three more slides, and um, well, I wanted to introduce you guys also to a Scoopit user. So not just a company, but uh, someone who is a really great um, super user of Scoopit. And she owns an architecture firm in Orange County, California, called My D Studio in Orange County. And she started curating about 14 months ago while researching for her firm's blog. And what she found is um, she can now explore as she research and post and share um, ideas and and um, content on things that she's interested in, including and also things that her um, firm is it stands for so, so her um, topics include sustainable architecture and data visualization and um, green um, uh, urban design so her name is Lauren Moss and here's her results so far uh, she has now a total target audience of 12,000 plus followers on niche topics um, she also has 168,000, over 168,000 page views, and she has 57,000 search results on Google just on her sustainable architecture topic, and she also has lead generation and brand awareness. She, she actually said this story where um, she, gained, she got one lead um, last year from her Scoop It uh, page, and I think that's great because architects usually have about, um, like a small firm like hers, about five to ten uh, clients. So one one lead from just doing something that you are already going to do on social media or you were already doing anyway, like researching about your industry, is is a good ROI. So as I told you before, we also are integrated to um, Mailchimp, and you could also export. Um, into an email account, as long as it's an HTML account, you can um, have this beautiful, um, your beautiful topic page and turn it into a newsletter. And you can do that uh, by choosing very easily on, on Scoop It. And um, as you can see here, this is a, a nonprofit organization in Washington, DC. And this is what, what they do to um, keep their um, email list subscribers engaged. They send out great, interesting um, uh, content around change making. And social entrepreneur. It really looks neat, and that's automated. Um, yeah, if you want, well, you have to just press a button, and basically, if you, and then you kind of choose how many scoops you want to put on there, and then it just export it out, and you have an HTML, beautiful HTML email right there. And do you, have, do you have room in that email to actually add a little bit more content outside of Scoop It, or is it pretty much like pre-designed like this? Um, so you see that they added um, a text on uh, above. on top, right? Yeah. They added that on their um, HTML newsletter okay. platform. I think they use vertical response. I'm not sure. Um, okay. But you can you can do that as well. We've done that before through Mailchimp. Okay. Sweet. And then um, and I also learned that a lot of the um, businesses use email to communicate with their customers. So this is a really great way to. Have another, you know, uh, another piece to really engage them. And yeah, you'll so be surprised how many, how many, how many people are, are still actually like to do business using email exclusively. Oh yeah, I find going on on, on on another way of communicating. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's like you use certain apps, and then they will only act once they receive the email notification. <laughs> I agree. And will not act like in real time when it happens. 
I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can never get away from it. So I think, um, Philippe, you asked me to put together some key metrics to measure if um, they decided to do social media um, uh, curation. And um, I uh, suggested, you know, pay, like, measure the page, page views on your topics, the engagement of your audience, engagement and following on your social network, uh, social networks, click-throughs on your curated newsletters, and qualified leads from your content. So, um, like I said before, I don't expect um, V2B business to have a, an audience of, like, an, a New York Times, but you, you, you as a B2B company or as B2B business should understand, you know, how big is your audience, and, um, and as long as you actually gather the right people, around your content, that's really what matters because those are the people that will evangelize your brand, evangelize your service and to um, you know, potential customers. So even if you're not reaching out, even if your media, your piece of content that you've curated didn't reach um, someone who is, who is a potential customer, it will reach someone who is interested in your industry, who will probably know somebody who might be your potential customer. And that's really the point of, of you know, doing this sort of content strategy is to engage people who are interested in, who are interested in you and can act as, uh, can amplify your message as a B2B business. Absolutely. So, um, are, are we ready for questions? Yes, I, I definitely. Awesome. Let, let, let's uh, maybe, here, here you are, perfect. So um, uh, just for the audience, uh, you can actually tweet your question at Sesson, C-E-S-S-O-N. And we've received uh, a few already. And uh, some of them are pretty basic and would rather you explain it. Uh, copyrights. Uh, some people are concerned about copyrights. Like, do you have the right to actually use content? And how does that work with legal legalese and you know stuff like this? So we are not. Um, basically not uh, dissimilar from posting a link on Twitter or a link on Facebook. And we, we have attorneys also that, that have, you know, user and, and copyright, um, uh, like our, our clearly, what do you call that, user, I, I forgot what they're called. But basically, I'm not, a, I'm not a lawyer. So when it comes to copyright. Neither am I. <laughs> Um, out of we have indexed and share our users have indexed and shared more than 50 million pieces of content since, since we've launched. And you know how many takedowns we've had since then? No. 42. Wow. So out of 50 million pieces of content that were posted on Scoopit, only 42 were asked to be taken down. So the reason why this is is because we. The way our platform gets our gets the piece of content is we don't have you publish the the whole piece, and it's always linked back to the original source with the source um, credited to it. Yes, you can change your like your post um, title, like you can change the headline to make it more relevant to your topic page, but that's not changing the actual post, and you're not stealing that content. Um, you're only giving like a glimpse. The, the little snippet with the photo, that's always lesser resolution than what, what the other, what the um, source has. So it's just basically showing a, a glimpse and a snippet of what um, it's, you know, what the, the content's about. And then we also tell you, hey, also add your insight to it and tell people why this piece of content is relevant to right. you. And that's separate from, that's a separate actual area from the actual content too. So really, it's 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 kind of it's the same as sharing to Twitter and um, taking a link and saying, "Oh, I think it's a good idea," and adding your you know piece of like 140 characters to to that. Um, to that and, and for people that never use a platform, when you actually click on, um, Arbella, are you still there? Hello. Oh, it looks like we lost her. Oh, there she is. Okay, oh. we drop. You can drop for a sec. I'll yeah. tell you this. Anyway, so um, uh, what I was saying was, um, um, I forgot what I was saying, actually. Yeah, yeah, for people that have actually never used the platform, uh, you can actually click. When you click on the article, it actually goes to the original source. Yes, exactly. 
I mean, we, it always does. Right. So tell us a little bit, and uh, I'm looking at certain questions that just came in again. Um, tell us a little bit about the um, uh, the SEO. Like it's 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 um, uh, very well uh, seen by Google. Can you give us maybe a little bit more like behind the scene look on uh, what exactly is being seen and what are like the best things to do to to help in that? Because yeah. the traffic goes to um, the the page. The page actually is on your server. But the page look and feel like you're, you're actually browsing the site of the user, right, of the company. Yeah. And, and we'll show an example again. Um, um, you know what? Let's actually use this uh, and, and actually, because um, I'd like to, to showcase one, uh, one company, um, like live, you know, um, and I don't know if we see it. Do we, do we see that? Yeah. Like Bailey, you know, we, talk, we talked about that. Bailey is a, is a hardwood lumber company. Yeah. Uh, is, is a client of our agency for a long time client actually and they've started using scoop it a little bit you know uh, probably like two months ago and they start they have different topics there um, could you explain a little bit you know that works for the SEO the look and feel and all of this yes yeah, so basically um, in terms of the SEO we have engineers that are you know working diligently to make sure this site is is well indexed by by Google you could actually um, you know, one of the things that we do um, that's different from, say, Pinterest or, or you know, which is a content creation site, is that you can actually host your um, Scoop It page on your own domain. And we really uh, say that this is very important because if you want to capture that traffic that is that Google is um, looking at, you should you should do that by hosting your Scoop It page on your dom domain, especially if you, I mean, only if you can do that. Um, you can only do that on, on the Scoop It business package. But it really does help. Um, another thing is, so if there's like, some of the tips that I, I would recommend in, in like really making your, your Scoop It page search engine optimized um, is, is very easy. You don't even have to have, you know, a sort of like expertise in SEO to do that. Uh, um, I've seen a lot of uh, users change um, just the, their post. Um, like think of this as if you're posting it on your, on your Facebook or on, on your Twitter or on your blog, okay? And just say, okay, um, how do you make this this content that you just curated? What would really grab the attention of of your readers? So you you read the piece of content. And you say, okay, I think that this piece of content, instead of the headline being something being what it is, I'm going to change my headline for this curated piece of content to kind of ask a question and then add like a sort of a keyword that really pertains to your industry. So. Um, the business growth topic is really interesting, um, Philippe. They yeah. they have a they have just as much uh, um, I think views on business growth as they do with their hardware lumber industry. But I remember speaking to one of their team members, and they said you know they would be interested in talking about just business growth, um, and that that that's a really interesting way of aligning your business and um, your business's website with. A, a topic or subject matter that is not necessarily your industry it and I think that what and that's a, a really good way to also be indexed in in Google for like something else that maybe is pertinent more about your your company values right so they have a company value of like entrepreneurship and and growing a solid business I mean they, they're a very successful b2b business and they want to share um, thought leadership on on business growth I think that's that's brilliant and it's a really great way as long as you also link back from your your header to your actual website it's a really great way to kind of go beyond of what beyond the content that's on your site because on your site you're just talking about yourself you're talking about your services but if you want to be, engage a larger audience you've got to take some risk and say okay I believe in this I believe in entrepreneurship as a lumber company and I want to curate on topics like that and you know pretty soon if they keep that up they might even get inquiries from the media to have um, interviews with their CEO and there's definitely a lot of ways to um, you know, get more out there because you will get found by by people. So, Bailey, if you're watching this, kudos! <laughs> you're doing a great job. I think that's brilliant that they did that. 
as well. Okay, anything else you want to add? Uh, uh, the question we have, I think, uh, well, um, is like, uh, we're going to post the actual presentation. It's going to be available on YouTube. We'll actually make your presentation and our slides together. We'll merge it and make it available for everyone to have. Um, I'm going to introduce actually a little thing before before we go, and then we'll just wrap it up. Uh, we've actually um, had the, the opportunity on our site to launch today. Um, oh, it's here good. we are. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there's company we really like, and uh, the company we really like, I believe our clients will like, and we kind of partner with different companies that will pretty much allow our clients, which are um, um, CEOs and, and companies, uh, mid-size to large, to actually um, have a better result in their social media and content creation. And we partner with uh, Sprout Social, Scoop It, Active Campaign, and a blog writer named uh, Lyndon Gross for content purposes. And you have actually a one-page site where you can, on your own, just fill out a form which is literally just name, first name, and company name. And then you receive detailed instruction on how to um, have access to those uh, uh, sites. Um, we do it really in, in, in a way to encourage people to use it. Uh, you, there's a little bit of benefits when you do this. Uh, there's extended free trial. Like, for example, uh, with you guys, Arabella, I think we have two months free as opposed to the usual uh, 15 days, which is pretty awesome. Plus, you get our coaching, and then uh, when Arabella is not traveling the world, uh, uh, your our coaching as well to actually make it succeed because uh, we really want uh, to lead the way of success in, in B2B social media. And I think a big part of what we do as an agency is this. So, um, Arabella, I so want to thank you so much. And I know we had to postpone in one week because you were under the weather last week. And uh, you look great today, and it was a great session. And uh, I also, let me come back to so we can see my, my smiling face. I also want to thank our, our friend here, Dante, that has been silently, let me see, where are you? Hello. Hey, Dante, that has been helping us, obviously, in the agency to make this work. Uh, of course, when we're ready to go live, the computer went down. But, you know, I think yeah, we, we soldered that through. So thank you so much, everyone. It was a pleasure. And we'll see you in a month, which will be the second week, the second Friday of the month of July. And we'll have an actual hangout with um, uh, one another company, uh, Sprout Social. And uh, Peter Dreiska from uh, Sprout Social will be there. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, Arvira. Bye. Bye.